Hey, it's Mike here with TIY or Tiny It Yourself, and today it's just me. I'm going to be making this wheel well structure. It's a bit unconventional because we have all this scrap metal left over from our build, and I want to use it. And you could just go out and get a one and a half inch stud, and it might work better, or just build this out of wood because it's not going to be that much weight. And I want to quickly mention it might help to follow along with this to go back and watch our original metal studs video to get, you know, just the basics of how to cut and stuff like that. All right. Let's go. This is the wheel well that I've already done, and this is the wheel well that we are going to finish off today. As you can see, nothing's there yet. All right, so I'm gonna start by making the longest piece, which is going to be out of this track. It's just gonna mirror that piece right there, be sort of a bridge. So when figuring out what points we wanna make our bends and cuts, we have to think about things like right there, where I'm anchoring the piece to the floor. We have, you know, an extra, inch and a half there, and then that diagonal piece, the super long piece all the way across, and then the same situation on the other side. So to mirror this part, I have an inch and a half, and I will just mark it once, and I'm gonna use my square to then extend the line all the way around and make sure that we get a nice square cut. And then to determine this length, since we're at a 45 degree angle, you can just take the height of your wheel well and then do Pythagorean theorem and figure out exactly what the diagonal is of the hypotenuse. In this case, I'm just gonna copy what I did earlier. And you, of course, can just measure based off your existing opening on the wall, which presumably you will have done by now. So for me, though, it's 12 and a quarter inches. So I'll go ahead and add that mark. Now for that long span, which in my case is 47 and a quarter. Go and mark that in there too. And because the whole thing is symmetrical, I'm just gonna add that 12 and a quarter and then one and a half inch again on this side. All right, I'm gonna quickly propagate my marks out with this square and the Sharpie so that I can get a full mark all the way around. All right, now that we're gonna start cutting, it's time to whip the gloves out. And just like the metal stud video, I'm going to use a razor blade to score that mark on the main side where I want to make a cut. And this is just the excess that we're gonna be getting rid of. So cutting all the way through, we got our score there. Might as well go again, just to get it really strong. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these sides too. Then we can do our little bend back and forth. And it's good to go. That was kind of a bad score, but there you go. Okay, now for all of the bends in the metal, we're just gonna cut the sides and leave the longest piece intact. And then you can bend these by hand, but I like to use these little hand metal press guys because they are amazing. So we're going for that 45 degree angle. Figure out the exact amount later, but there you go. There's the beginning. All right, now for the next one, same situation. Cut the small sides. Getting bent the exact opposite way. And now you can see right now how that would be a very weak joint. And so we're gonna go ahead and make a reinforcing sort of brace for that. So we're creating this piece right here, which is just a four inch piece bent with two inches on each side. And so let's get to it. Cool part about this is if you just built the house, you definitely have a lot of pieces like these. So you just gotta make sure that they are four inches long. So I'm just gonna cut these. All right, so at this point I can take out my number eight half inch lath screws, also known as truss headed screws. And so we have this sort of joint right here, which is just that piece added on. And if we put all of the screws in, if we screw there, there, and there, then it will fix the angle. And we don't know the exact angle yet. And so I just wanna tap one in. So I'm gonna show you how I'll put one in there. 
there like that. And if that's if that's a little difficult, you can always pre-drill with 3 16ths bit or something like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that whole process on this end. All right, here's the current situation. We have a pretty good start here. Okay, instead of going crazy and mapping out the exact angle that I need, I'm just gonna go and put it up against my existing opening to make sure it matches. And once I get it in the right place, I am just going to sort of mark right along the edges. So And that way I can make sure those perfectly line up when I'm screwing in to make sure the angle is right. And for a closer look at that, you know, that's wrong. That's more or less right. That would be wrong. You know, it's pretty approximate, but it'll do the job. Okay, now since these are a little bit more prone to error, I am going to go ahead and pre-drill these first. I believe this is an eighth inch drill bit. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna put a third screw right here to fully stabilize that joint, and you definitely wanna pre-drill this one because the back gives a little bit and it's just not easy to screw. Now we just need to do that on the other side. Now these small guys are a little bit difficult. If you really are having trouble, I would suggest putting a wooden block in between. You'll probably need one. Just a two by four will probably do the job. It's doable though, uh, the same way. You just have to really support it from the back and watch your finger. And there's the result, little, little hole. All right, once you've repeated that process for both sides of each joint, then we have to get rid of just this little excess on this corner here because we're going to be sandwiching OSB on both sides of this. So we want a smooth sort of wall each way. And so we just go and nip this off pretty easy. All right, now we have that main bridge piece freestanding. The hardest part, I would say, is officially done. And now you can really get an idea of why we needed to chop off those little corners. All right, the next step is to anchor our main piece here. And it's pretty obvious you can line this edge up with this edge here. But then in order to find the thickness, you can either measure to one and a quarter inches, which is the thickness of these, or you can simply mark it out. And then you can come in here. And I'm just gonna pop down two of these screws, the same screws we've been using. This isn't super structural, otherwise I would probably go deeper with longer screws, but this will do for me. There are two, and same for the other side. All right, back to the finished side. The next part we're gonna make is basically just the posts of the bridge, these pieces right here, which are made out of scrap studs, the normal C-channel. Okay, so in order to cut this piece, you really just need to know the height of your sort of bridge here. And so it's from there to there, plus the overlap length, which in my case is just one and a quarter inches, so you add two and a half inches to that height, and then you know what length to cut. So you can get a better idea here. I basically made flaps that then get anchored down, and then on the top, I just pierced two screws through. And that right there is just from one of the sort of utility holes that comes with the studs. It's not important, it's just sort of extra. And you're probably thinking, I don't already have a wheel well made to measure off of, so the best way to get the height of that post, in my opinion, is to take a square like this, and just come out from the floor. And in my case, it's about eight and three eighths inches. You might just have it in your drawings anyway, but this is how I made it. 
grabbed a piece of scrap stud and now I'm just going to measure out my points and make those cuts. Okay, now the only real full cut we're going to make is gonna be right here, so I'll score that with the razor blade. The other cuts are just going to be along the corner, so I'll extend my mark. I like to do a dotted line where I'm gonna fold it. And once you have that dotted line, this is the cut you're gonna be making, so I just like to do a nice mark along that. I don't even bother with marking side lines on these because there's this sort of pattern here you can follow. I'm just gonna cut along that to meet my score on one side. Cut along it to meet my score on this side. Now I'm gonna do my slits here. Just gonna cut all the way to that intersection on all four corners. Maybe slightly past it, because as you're gonna see, the next step is to bend this in, at least on the bottom, this will be the bottom. Bend it in on that one, and in order to it, for it to not add some height, it's good to go and cut slightly past your mark. These guys are going to come out. And these guys are gonna come out. and this guy's going to stay where it is. All right, there you go. And a little detail here, you'll see that C part of the C channel kind of flares out and becomes flat here. And when it's flat, it is wider than the thickness of the posts that we have. So we need to just cut that off. Once you've done that score and that cut, this is how it's supposed to go. You know, sometimes life is just harder. Okay, now go ahead and repeat that process three times. I'm doing three posts because I feel like that's enough. And also be sure to collect all of your scraps, otherwise you are literally creating a minefield. All right, the next step is to put these guys in. And in order to get a little bit of extra support, I want to actually utilize this, get at least one screw here. And the way I'm gonna do that is just bend this out, maybe a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to place them in on the ground and so we can still drill into that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I will be lining my posts up so that there's just enough room for this flap here. And so pretty approximately, I'm just gonna mark sort of my end point there. And that way I can start screwing this guy in. And you might be thinking, how am I gonna get down in there? And that's, I'm gonna introduce you to my good friend, the angle drill. I was able to pick this up in a batch of tools at an auction for like basically zero dollars. Um, but this tool has saved so much time and effort for me and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in like that and screw it in. All right, so this guy just goes in right there like that. Now I can turn that way. And if you don't have one of these, you could have just you know thought a step ahead and put this in before this and that way you wouldn't have had to go under that. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Probably actually would help to get a bit of a start out here. All right, there's one. Still good depth. All right. There we go. Now I can pop this guy in. And do the same thing right here. All right. And now I'm just going to sink my two screws in right here. You could go crazy and do one under here and under here, but honestly, this feels strong enough for me, and the main strength from this comes from the OSB being attached to it. Anyway. All right, so now we just need to find the midpoint for the second guy and then repeat the same process for it, and then the same thing again on the third one at the end, just mirroring this one. Okay, so I marked the midpoint on the ground, I marked the midpoint here so I can match them up, and then I also started these two screws before putting them down there just to make life easier. All right. Let's go for it. Not gonna be able to really see this at all, sorry. It's pretty good to me. 
I just pop that guy in, and same process up here as the last one. All right, and then the third one, I think you get the idea for. Just pop it in right over there. Just so you can see, it's totally doable to get these guys in without the angle, the angle drill. No problem. All right, so now that main bridge part is done. So on to the next step. Okay, now looking at the finished wheel well, the logical next step would be to put these horizontal braces on. But if you do that before you put this piece of wood in, then it's not going to fit. It's geometrically impossible to get it to fit over those wheels. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut that and slide it in and now. So I will figure out the exact dimensions for this sort of trapezoid or whatever it is. And then I'll slide the piece of cut OSB in. All right, so now that I have this piece done, I'm just going to slide it in there, sort of out of the way, down onto the axles. And now I don't have to worry about it later. All right, so the biggest disadvantage about using extra metal two by fours instead of the one and a half inch track they have is that we need something to screw into from, from the outside. And right now that's empty. So what I have to do is cut an extra piece of track. I mean, I have a ton of this stuff left over and put it around this piece like that. And that will give a nice surface to adhere to for the OSB on the outside. And because I want that to be insulated too. I'm gonna cut some of this extra pink board and slide it in there. You can also drill holes and spray foam in, whichever is easier for you. All right, since it's gonna be a little hard to see inside the actual posts, here is an example of how the two layers of foam fit together to insulate that stud just like that. All right, these are pretty easy to shove in there. And by the way, these are half inch sheets of pink foam and half inch is actually five eighths of an inch. So you stack two of those and you get one and a quarter, which is the interior dimension of these studs. All right, so of course you'll need three of these sleeves to cover three posts. And once you have those cut, and of course you put the insulation in the post, you can just slide those on the outside over it. I like to do four screws in this situation so we have a really stable surface to screw into when we're screwing that OSB on. And then repeat that on the other side. And the same process for the other two posts. Okay, now we're on the final step, which is making the beams that connect the wall to the actual little wheel well part we made. And we're gonna do that with some track, just the uh, normal old C-channel stuff. And it's gonna be sort of similar to these posts in how they're cut. It's just gonna extend a little bit further and wrap around so it can wrap around this front edge and get a good anchor there. All right, let's go. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this piece. And yes, that is bird poop. So we're gonna have the uh, flap that connects it here. So we're gonna cut at least an inch out here for flaps and then fold over that way. I'm gonna come out about eight and a half inches for me in my case here. And then I'm gonna cut flaps out of here that will then fold out and meet this edge. And then I will fold this edge over down toward the front and probably make flaps here as well. So it's gonna have a lot of connection points. All right, so we're getting into some origami level stuff here, but it's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So we got, you know, just fold there, fold there, cut there. And then we're gonna sort of cut out a sort of L here, and then it's gonna fold back that way. This isn't anything, this just signifies where it meets that post or beam. And then we have a fold here, a fold here, and a cut here. Pretty simple, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so these might need a little bit of adjusting when we fit it in, but that is the basic piece. Essentially just what we did in the post, but then extends up here. All right, so you can then repeat that process and make three of these, and let's see how one of these guys fits.
All right, there's one. Okay, now, so similarly to how we attached those posts to the ground, I'm gonna get that sort of diagonal angle going here. It's gonna be kind of hard for you to see, but basically I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple screws in through this guy and really anchor it. All right. All right. All right, there's one of two. All right, I'm gonna bring the angle drill back out for this guy right here. All right. <laughs> All right, that's starting to feel pretty solid. All right, so I've thrown these beams into their final positions and I'm just gonna screw them in. In this situation, I'm going to also share one of the post screws. And the nice thing about these is that you don't need to put another piece on the other side because there's already enough surface on the bottom of this piece and the bottom of this piece for the OSB on the bottom to be anchored properly. And so that's basically it. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up. All right, so this is as far as we are gonna go in this video. We have everything we need to attach to that outer layer of OSB. And then when the time comes to do the top level, if you need more surface area to screw onto, you can always do something like this, for example. You know, throw another little piece of track on there, and that way you'll have some more surface area to deal with. And you might have to block certain parts out to really get a uh, anchoring surface. All right, so that's it for this video. Let us know down below what you thought about this sort of unconventional wheel well structure. Again, I just felt like I had to use all that scrap. You had to get some origami going. All right, so feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and go ahead and follow us at Tiny It Yourself on Instagram if you like Instagramming. All right, see you next time.